Hi, everybody, and welcome to Google Earth. Let's have some fun with this today. Uh, this is earth.google.com, and that's how you get to it. It takes you to a loading screen that says Launch Earth in Chrome. So you click that, and then there's a bit of a loading screen because this program is just enormous. For anybody who's played around with it, that's kind of the only downside of this program. There is a bit of a loading time, but once it does load up, you get to this screen, and this is kind of our jumping off point. So this quick video just talks about a couple of the tools that we use, and we'll get more into these tools um, when we start to talk about the specific uses for your classrooms and also distance learning. So we talked about learning styles a little bit earlier and how we tend to be more audio teachers than kinesthetic with exception to band, but we're not super visual. Whenever we're teaching kids about composers or um, expression, we, we like to pull up Google images, which are great. Kids like to see pictures of, you know, concepts and ideas, but which is better? A flat Google image or something like this. So let's pretend like we have a group of kids who are learning a French folk round. I know those are pretty typical for middle school, maybe upper elementary, um, even beginning high school. And we want to talk about the country of Paris. We want to talk about something that kids can easily identify. So we want to show them the Eiffel Tower. So what you do is you go and you search here. I've already done it just to save on time. Instead of showing them a flat Google image, we're going to search the Eiffel Tower. And it takes us into the country. Kids can see where Paris is in relation to um, the rest of the world. We can zoom in a little bit right here. And this is what we're used to seeing with regular Google Earth from the 90s, early 2000s, but here's how Google Earth has changed. It has turned into a 3D world. So here's where we get to these buttons over here. We click 3D and here's where the cool stuff happens. It turns Paris on its side and it rotates. We're now, instead of just seeing a flat 2D image, kids are able to see that the Eiffel Tower is along the edge of a major river, the Seine. It's along a big park. There are other interesting things all around it. There's museums, there's gardens, there's um, bridges that connect all these different people. So when we're talking about how Paris functions as a city, the way the societies work, we can see the way people move and get around. And you can just see the size of it. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, but here's probably my kids' favorite things. It's getting a really cool view. So this button right here is what we've always known as street view. We've used it to look at our houses, our schools, our businesses, and kids have played around with this to look at their houses. And they will ask you, can we look up my house? The answer is no, that is illegal. But for places like this, you can click and drag your little person and then blue bubbles and blue lines show up. So the lines are street view, but the bubbles are what's really cool. So I'm gonna stick you in a blue bubble right underneath the Eiffel Tower. And what it does is it gives us a whole perspective of the Eiffel Tower that I'll bet you you've never seen unless you've actually been there. My kids go, whoa, and it's all lit up. You're seeing the city at night, and you're seeing people. You're seeing nightlife in the city. So Google sends out teams of people to take these images, and it gives you a very cool real view of the city. Now, these pictures are not in real time. It's not a live stream. These are taken over a series of time. You know this. Kids don't always know this. So these are not real-time images but still your kids can go wow look at just the structure of that any of your art friends um architecture friends engineering friends could also find this helpful and interesting so that's one really cool way to use google earth um so those are some of just the basic buttons and 
tools to help us get into Google Earth and play around with it. If you ever want to go back to just the global view, you just click the globe. And it takes us all the way back out. You can search anything. Anything is a go. 